Hi! Do you wish you were able to draw, play music, learn how to paint, write stories, or even make a little movie? Yeah, but never really actually do it. Or maybe you already did your creative leap and you allowed yourself to create some of the creations that you always wanted to create, but you still feel embarrassed to show them to the world. Or maybe you are an established artist getting fairly paid for your work, but it doesn't matter how good you are told to be. There's a deep part of you that never believes it fully. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. If you recognized yourself in the above, congratulations and welcome to the club. You are haunted by a dangerous monster threatening your self-confidence and your inner peace. And that monster is shame. Sorry. <laughs> And I'm not talking about that short-lived experience of shame that we all experience at some point, somewhere in our lives. No, I am talking about the internalized shame. What is it? <laughs> First formulated by Gershon Kaufman, doctor and professor in psychology and a pioneer in the concept of shame, he stated it as, internalized shame is experienced as a deep sense of being defective and never quite good enough as a person. Ew. That's a sad story that should stop right now. How to heal creative shame. Fellow creatives, <laughs> if you want to heal your creative shame and unleash your creative beast inside you, well then I've got some tea for you. I myself used to criticize and judge, chronically criticize and judge my artistic expressions. Oh wow, thank you, that's a beautiful mistake, but thank you. <sighs> Take it from me, I do not deserve it. Till one day, I found the method that changed my life upside down. It helped me a lot. The method of Julia Cameron in her major bestseller book, The Artist's Way, chapter Shame and Dealing with Criticism, page 77 to 83, and all the other pages really. She says, she gives a deeper psychological analysis saying that our internal artist is always our creative child. She explains that if our adult artist, creative, whoever we are today is feeling resistance towards creating something, is because our creative child is trying to avoid feeling the shame and judgment that he might have lived in the past. That means that if we want to heal the creative person that we are today, we need to reconnect with that creative child within and to heal him, her from the shame that he might have experienced in his sweet childhood. How to do that? One, reconnection. Julia Cameron teaches us one of the ways that we could use to reconnect with the inner child within us by giving us a set of questions that we should answer to in the most truthful way. So I will give you some of my favorite questions, but know one thing, you can only have results if you actually write the answers down and put everything emotionally onto those answers, okay? The answers, the questions, sorry. Number one, if it weren't too late, I would fill in the blank. What would you do if it weren't too late? If I could lighten up a little, I would let myself fill in the blank. What would you do if you could lighten up a little? 
three. If it didn't sound so crazy, I would make a and even if it sounds crazy, hell do it! Crazy is good. <coughs> My parents think artists are... Fill in the blank. It's very important what your parents, your education, your society thinks artists are because that's all in here influencing you right now. Last one. If I had a perfect childhood, I would have grown up to be fill in the blank <sighs> so why it worked for me when I was doing this exercise myself I was noticing that I was having two kinds of answers in my mind one coming from a voice that is louder more defensive judgmental and answers coming from a quieter voice shyer voice that I felt was a truer answer so when I try to neutralize that loud voice and focus more on the quieter one, I was feeling that it was telling me my truth. The truth about what I really want, the truth about what I really fear. And that established a connection, an emotional connection with that creative part of me that I've been denying and rejecting and just shutting down in my subconscious. But since it was just the f one of the first times that I tried to establish this connection with my inner child, the strings were fragile and the bliss of this regathering lasted only for a few moments before my autopilot and my old habits came back and, you know, broke the party. And that leads us to number two reinforcing and healing congratulations maybe you've established that connection with your creative child now we have to straighten that relationship so that it never splits up again oh how little one showing up again and again and again and again and again a powerful tool to reconnect on a regular basis with that creative child within you is through journaling. Not any journaling, but writing from the perspective of your creative inner child. Let her say all that he or she wants to do, all that they want to be, all that they want to achieve. No logic, no limit, everything. Just let it out, no judgment. And every time you do it freely, you will meet that creative child on that paper. The more you do it, the more this reconnection starts to be more natural and spontaneous and strong. And the less you will suffer when you try to do your creative activities. Ooh. Okay. Little two, being the good parent figure that reassures that creative child, that nourishes them with all the love and validation that they lacked. Whoever shamed you in the past creatively and made you doubt yourself today, doesn't matter. You are the new voice that beats the old. And the creative child inside of us only needs our own validation. If we can give it to them, we will not have to seek it elsewhere so thinking of your artistic creations coming from your creative child will be easier for you to be nice with easier for you to encourage we're not talking anymore about give love to yourself we're talking give love and validation for your creative child to reconnect with a part of yourself that you left behind feels like finding an old best friend an old best friend that knows very well what you always wanted and feels it with you making you feel whole after being empty or found after being lonely i mean it feels great i want to finish this talk by saying that the reason why I had these learnings, experimentations, is because I started to allow myself to create stuff, finally. And I feel grateful for it because 
I believe creativity is not just a hobby. Creativity is a bridge to yourself. It has the potential to reconnect you with parts of yourself that you have left behind on the way. And it makes you understand what you need to work on in order to be free. The importance of creativity is not about, you know, creating a good movie or painting a good painting. The importance of creativity is receiving the healing that comes with it. So we're gonna keep creating stuff and we're gonna keep noticing what happens inside our bodies, emotional bodies, and we're gonna keep talking about it and trying to solve it. Sounds like a plan. Have I been sitting like this all along? My mother will kill me. Okay. Mm. Thank you for watching. I like talking like this to no one in my living room.